currently running for office. I'm a second district city councilman, and I've been a councilman for the last seven years of my life. I'm on four year terms. I'm the youngest African American ever elected into office in the city of South Bend. And uh, right now I'm working to become the, the next mayor of South Bend, which will be the 33rd mayor of South Bend. Uh, my time being spent on council uh, consists of a number of things. Uh, the, con the, con the conversations I have uh, with constituents about you know, their services, city services, excuse me, get, you know, civil city services, but they get into all kinds of stuff at times. Uh, that may uh, actually perform that my duties don't require me to. So I have a fiduciary uh, responsibility to the city of South Bend. Uh, I am the person that oversees the budget, along with eight other people. Uh, with overseeing the budget, obviously you're earmarking things for priority. Uh, it's our moral document. So with our moral document, you know, this is what we're saying that it's most important. Uh, police and fire, which is public safety, takes up close to 90 percent of our entire budget. Okay. So with the with that being said, obviously public safety is our you know number one priority, uh, which doesn't suggest uh, two it doesn't look good on us on the other hand, obviously because of my crime that we have. Uh, but past that we have um, departments of the parks and rec, we have uh, the engineering department, and we have so many other departments within the city of South Bend that we uh, use street, uh, water, sewer uh, to make sure the city is maintained well, is safe, uh, is presentable. Um, so we have code enforcement as well, uh, that the city itself will obviously grow and thrive uh, based upon a lot of people that want to come and relocate here, such as yourself, or you as well, you know, um, buy a home and uh, become tax-paying citizens. Uh, so that is the main goal of what I do as a council person. Uh, the other thing is that I'm a, a strong advocate for the city, uh, especially my constituents. I've been put in this a lot of different predicaments uh, where I had to, you know, take public stances for the vote could be eight to one. That one would be that the city vote would be me because it just doesn't line up for the district that I, I represent. And so that has been a part of, you know, my love of advocacy. Uh, sometimes I appear to be or tend to be like an odd man out because of that. But if the folks that put me into office uh, wants to be there to do the job that they ask me to do, then that's what I'm going to do. I have never been tried to be a part of the, the status quo because I'm not, obviously, I don't even fit the mode of the status quo, number one, number two. That's just not why I'm here. And, and it's really simple to me, you know, and it has been quite simple. It has come with an expense, uh, not, not necessarily monetary. Uh, it's come with a lot of different things. I've been in ridiculous where I've had jobs that were, you know, connected to the government, and I've lost those jobs for, like, we don't know, reasons. Um, obviously, it's because of different votes that I've taken throughout the time that I've been there, uh, different stance I've taken, and you know, kind of just tell you, you know, and we see later type deal, and, and you just keep going, and I have just kept going. Uh, so, here more recently, I've been, you know, eyeing the mayor seat for a considerable amount of time. Uh, it's not because of the current mayor, but just because that's what I wanted to do when I signed up. You know, this has been something I wanted to do, uh, been wanted to do. Well, um, here more recently, we've had you know a number of scandals that have taken place. Um, we've got like five open investigations within the mayor's department um, for corruption. If you have probably been living under a rock, you probably would have missed the fact that we've had this police state scandal going on, where these officers, you know, I've been calling them on, on, on tape, doing things that are obviously against their uh, job responsibilities. Uh, the council has gone to bat for the constituency in the South Bend population to maintain some type of trust and loyalty with this constituency base of these, these, the population. Uh, the administration has continued to maintain that there probably was not that much wrongdoing, uh, but he's interested in finding out you know, what's on the tapes. Uh, there was a pivot uh, a couple of weeks ago where now the administration is saying that you know they want to move past this issue. There's been over $2 million spent on uh, trying to keep these tapes concealed. Um, and by concealing them, continues to pique our interest about what's really going on. Uh, and so that is one of the main things that have been going on here outside of trying to maintain some civil order in the city of South Bend. Um, I came to speak with you, not to alarm you or scare you all, and say that we're really bad because I think we're not bad as scary. Not bad. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, we're interested, I'm interested in trying to figure out 
you being a student here, uh, you being not from here as well as yourself, what does it take for you to stay in South India? What does it? What would keep you here? Uh, what is the job outlook for you? Um, uh, what is the housing outlook for you? Obviously, you're younger. What, what does the nightlife look like for you? You know, how do you fit in to the culture of South Bend as it stands right now? And, and do you fit in? And why you don't fit in will probably be the other side of that coin. <laughs> I think one of the things that definitely keeps me in South Bend is because um, I, definitely, I definitely relate to a lot of um, citizens in this area because People are very community oriented and very work oriented and I've seen that in a lot of people and you know I've done some of those kinds of work with those people and even in this group and it kind of helped me you know find out who I was as a person and that I truly feel like I belong here and also people are very motivated here people are also very open minded and um, people are very tolerant of people who uh, different people, like no matter what kind of background they come from. Um, that's another thing I noticed about South Bend. So I think really one of the things that keeps me here is, you know, um, working with other people who are very motivated to making a change in the community and just working with people who have a positive vision in general about sure. anything. So hopefully that answers your question. Well, yeah. yeah. Sure answer. Yeah. When you say nightlife, like, what do you mean, like? Well, I mean that that would consist of a bar movie. That would consist of uh, uh, yeah. a core mix. That would consist of uh, it, CJ. I mean, any other place. I, I mean, personally, I don't go out anymore. Yeah. Uh, if I do, it's you know a rarity, you know, for me. So, I mean, but when I was 21, 22, yeah. you know, that's what I wanted to do. That was what was happening for me. Well, I would say that kind of student or whatever. Um, me and my friends always complain about how there's nothing for us um, more to relax people to do in the city of South Bend, but um, just because there aren't a lot of other things. And what I hate the most about South Bend is that everything shuts down at like a certain time. Like at 5 p.m.? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> it's so dry. And I just, in Chicago, but then there's the, the Chicago, or being the bigger city, is you know it concerns me a little bit more just because it's not a state and, and things like that. Um, I think South Bend is like the perfect place to raise a family. Like if you're like relaxed, conservative, and, and you. You like small cities, this would be a great place to raise a family, have a career, do the daily to and fro work, and, um, so yeah, I can't really say much about my own <laughs> uh, Even individuals at our age level, you know, we enjoy the social aspect of being in the city, but you know, we're near our matriculation in college. So even though we're still enjoying our youth, we still have right. things that you know, sure. in a, you know, an older individual will have. So we're thinking about uh, is there a sustaining job, you know, recruitment in the area that where I can find a job in my field and make a decent living. Sure. Well, no, what is that? My particular yeah. field. My yeah. particular field is uh, biochemistry, so okay. the science arena. So what would you do with that? Uh, there are many options. I can go into industry, which would include working for, you know, any of the, the uh, companies, thermal scientific, or, you know, any of the various companies. Uh, it could include uh, medical school, any of the, you know, uh, professional schools, things of that nature. So I'm still kind of deciding, but just having those opportunities make this will make, you know, th that's those are things that make that will make this more of a appealing place to be. Um, I think another thing is, for me, I'm a parent, and he, I, I would guess for even these two who aren't parents yet, it's still in their mind that, you know, can I raise my children here? What are the schools like? And I think that's really uh, the economic factor and the education factor. Those are the two most important things. What jobs do you have here, and how good are the schools? Everything else is just extra. Yeah. So, you know, what would make this place appealing for me to be here is, are the people in the position to make these things better, 
what are they investing into the education and what are they investing into jobs in the city. And those are the two things that I look for in, in any city and I'm, pr I'm pretty sure most people would. So, you know, it, it's up to the people in the positions to, you know, to make those things appealing to people like us. Are, are they doing that? Uh, expectation from freshmen, if somebody from freshman year of high school, if, you know, a kid doesn't go to college, that should be out of the norm. At this point, I, I feel like mm -hmm. we have kids that are able, even even with the discrepancies and, you know, or the disadvantages we face in educationally, we, uh, in a lot of cases, we are starting to overcome those at an alarming rate and we're just not, we get to the point where we can go to college and it's like, okay, how do I pay for it? Or yeah. what what are the things I'm not looking for in a good college? Not being trained about the yeah. culture of college, not you know the culture of financial aid, the culture of getting ready for classes, looking at a career, you know, you know, set. It's, we need to. It's time for the next level. Like yeah. we're ready to go to college now. We need to start to prepare right. our our kids to be here. You know, they, they need to be ready to 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 be here now. So. Well, great. I hope that we can, you know, continue this conversation on the 20th. Uh, you'll get a filler. Who do I contact? Do I get back at you with the information? So uh, we will define that, you know, we'll have yeah, given you date the 20th at 6 p.m. at your annex. And um, we're going to do a work with Ivy Tech to pull their students as well. And obviously community-wide, community-based. Uh, I'd like to set the this conversation. Uh,